This is going to be a different kind of video. Uh, this won't be a standard video that you guys are known for me of doing, similar to when I do opinions, thoughts, uh, discussions, or just showing off games or anything like that. Uh, th this kind of video is more so a love for a game that I spent three years playing, as well as a sort of nice little message towards the company who have done that, called Digital Extremes. Um, the game, obviously, is Warframe. Warframe, a couple days ago, I think four or five days ago by now, released one of their biggest updates to date, uh, called The Plains of Eidolon. And I've been noticing that a lot of people have jumped into it. I believe, last time I heard, that it jumped to number four top um, Steam game uh, the, n the number fourth game ever played out of all games on Steam. Um, I don't think it beat Dota, because I think the only game that did was Pug. And, um, you know, it got really big. We got a massive influx of new people, and I've been able to try and talk to some of them and try to help them as best of my ability. Um, just hopefully they don't run into any of those uh, elitist jerks out there who tend to... Uh, treat any newbies like dirt instead of encouraging and helping them as much as they can. But Plades of Eidolon is, is something that marks a beautiful moment for Warframe and what the future could be do, done for such a free-to-play game. And I know a lot of people probably, uh, you know, weren't interested in it because one of the biggest drawbacks to a lot of people was the fact that almost everyone has talked about how great it is, but the only downside is the grind, and I can understand why a lot of people don't like that. But, you know, for a free-to-play game, it's kind of one of the things you have to kind of sacrifice from sometimes. There are some games that, you know, in a sense can do things better, but I think that Warframe benefits the most for what it gives. Now, I started playing this um, this game back around March or April of 2014, and uh, one of my good uh, one of my good friends uh, met me up with his brother. They all had a clan already on Warframe, and slowly I started learning this game and and playing just getting much more better into the game than I thought I would. It was hard for me because the game is very intimidating back when I first played it. The old menu of how it looked like, how the blueprint system worked originally, and how it wasn't really engaging, as well as how you uh, mod or upgrade your mods. It was it was very hard to teach the player of what, what you're doing. And if it wasn't for my friends and the clan that I was a part of for this, I probably would not have gotten far as I was today. And then later in, I believe it was in 2014, uh, we... I, Either 2014 or 2015, we got the Ordis update, uh, the ship update, and instead of that, that weird menu, we actually can walk around on our ship and walk to each of the stations, and it actually feels more lively. You know, we have a ship that's ours. We can color it as we please, inside and out. And, you know, that update was pretty cool. The Arcwind update later down the line was also an interesting thing. The relays that add social you know, groupings, even though this game is not considered an MMO in that regard, it's not like, you know, where you can run around places and see everyone at the same time, but the Realize were a nice little social group to see many different uh, Warframe accounts and Tenos as, you know, we tend, uh, as what is called in the game, to, you know, to socialize with other people. Sometimes you can make new friends that way. You know, there there are ways you can access um, missions through there in the relays and return back to the relays, which is pretty cool. And just day by day, they were just adding these nice and big updates and were releasing, like, new Warframes every three to four months, you know, and adding new quests. And it wasn't until they added the quest Natal that really was very amazing for a lot of people who are liking this game because a lot of people like lores in game and Warframe's lore there's a lot there but it's all somewhat discombobulated if you don't if you don't have a clear path of what you're looking at uh when you read certain texts you just think it's flavor text and it's just there to set up a world but it doesn't it doesn't feel like anything for the beginning first couple of years when you I first played it but over time, I started getting connecting about the, the what the old war was because Ordis started talking about it, as well as some hintings that Lotus and, and Kenshin 
t no, not Kenshin. Tension. Ah, I can't say his name for some reason. Um, that's my fault. But, you know, and when we got the Natal quest, we were able to get certain, you know, certain surprises. We made us go, wait a second. What is this? And we were waiting for the next update after this. Because most of the quests that they added originally were mostly just basic little quests to help you teach the game. How the cube row helped you understand how that worked, and a lot of the other quests help you how to do certain missions and certain styles. And it helps the player at least a little bit um, to, to understand what they're looking at farther into the game. But when Second Dream hit, that blew everyone's minds. Many streamers made videos about it. There was many videos on YouTube about it. I made my own video about it, although it was be cut down very very much and I feel bad about that um, and it, it it marked a massive moment because it's like instead of it just being these randomly procedurally generated maps that you just go in do a mission and leave we had cutscenes we had dialogue we have story and when we got to that reveal it blew everyone's minds away it blew mine away too you know and you can see that reaction on my channel if you if you so desire and you know, and time goes on with more updates. You know, they got rid of the stamina bar and updated the bullet jump system, which made coptering obsolete, and so people could use whatever their favorite melee weapon was instead of being forced to use a dagger to get better speed. They changed the way you know you upgrade mods now. So instead of power cores and guessing how much you need, it's an instant upgrade pip with an endo price, and that's pretty nice as well. Ways you can grab endo than just killing enemies, you can also grab them by finding itane statues. You can get one once for, uh, per week from Mar Maru's Brazar, you know, and there's other ways to grind endo, which is very, very nice. They've changed so much to help the pay players that even though I'm a veteran, and I've been playing this game for a very long time with close to 2,000 hours of this game, I like the changes they've been made so I can help any friends of mine who want to get into it. You know, and the way they did it, just it's much more friendly than it was years ago when I first played. And I give major, major props to Digital Extremes on everything they've done. So much. This is a game that I've spent three years and close to 2,000 hours of playing. You know, which is more hours than I've played on a single game. Like most multiplayer games, I have on average of like 500, 600 hours. 600 hours. Uh, you know, Battlefield 3 on the on the Xbox was was close to 600. Almost every Call of Duty is close to 500, 600. You know, Counter Strike I think is up in the 700. You know, uh, but Warframe is up in the 2000. You know, it's it's probably the most played game to date than any other game I've played in the past. And that I think shows a lot of what Warf what Warframe has has done to me as as a gamer and a part of the community for this. You know, I know people make jokes about the fact that, you know, Warframe is the game Destiny wishes to be, which is always a funny joke, but regardless of that comparison, Warframe on its own, I think is is beautiful on what the developers are doing. Every single week, almost every single week on Friday, they release a dev de dev stream to show you what's coming up, what's next, what's in the pipe works. They they let you know when something's going to get dropped, you know, um, and it's sooner or later they let us know any reveals. Tenocon back in July is when they showed off the Planes of Edel Eidolon uh, announcement as well as the another new cutscene update, which I think I remember correctly, it was called the Sacrifice. You know, the the adding of the mods, making things more easier for people to get into this game, the junction system so you know what course to to plot, and just how friendly the community is. You know, when I first started, I, I met a lot of new people just from, you know, joining random games, and they helped me so much, so did my friends, and I've been bouncing that back as much as I can. You know, when I see Master Ranks 2s, 3s, and 5s, I try my best to help them out in any way, shape, or form. You know, if they have the credits and they want to, I, I sometimes drop them free mods that may take them forever to earn, but to help them at least get somewhere. Because the grind can be annoying, and I definitely understand that for a lot of people. But there's something about this game that makes the grind completely just fine. And maybe it's just because of me, and maybe I'm just complicit about it, and some people may want to argue it's a psychology thing, but... 
there's something about Warframe and how they did the grinding system that I think is very fair and fun. In every update, they've always made things a little bit more simpler or easier without changing the entire core mechanic of the game, without incredibly upsetting the community. Unlike most games where updates can cause downvotes and view bombings and things like that, Warframe barely has had that happen. The only one that I remember that caused such a massive sting was when they didn't update just before the War Within they called the Vacuum Within, which basically, um, to, to kind of go on a sidestep, basically uh, there, was a, there was a Sentinel called Carrier where it had a passive ability called Vacuum, and it allowed to suck up items within a certain distance right towards you so you don't have to walk over them. Well, they wanted to make that more of a public thing, and so they added an update to where all Sentinels had a passive to where they had a vacuum. But it, this upset people, so then they removed that passive and turned it back into a mod, but can be placed on any Sentinel that you have the mod capacity and the slot to do so. And then they changed Carrier to being an ammo giver, which is very, very useful if you use a lot of ammo, which is very nice. But it did cause a massive upset last time I checked, but I haven't seen anything as big as that. Uh, you know, I haven't seen it as when Payday 2 released microtransaction and that caused a massive sting for a couple of months until they finally fixed themselves, I think like a year later. I have not seen Warframe ever done that before. And I just very happy to be a part of this. I'm very happy to, to try and play this as much as I can. I know I don't make Warframe content compared to most YouTubers out there. Um, it's because I play a lot of other games and I like to be a multi-gaming channel. But I do play a lot of Warframe just a lot. I, I, I It's kind of slowed down because of the fact that I've done pretty much everything, although Eidolon is taking up pretty much of my time on top of everything else like Overwatch and Counter-Strike and some other games that I got for my PS3. Not to go crazy and off tangent, but I'm just happy that a game like this I, I've given so much passion about. I love the creations of the Warframes. I like how relatively balanced pretty much a lot of the weapons are. I, As much as it didn't need to be in the game and no one's really going to be playing it and that's fine, I still think the Conclave mode, the PvP aspect is very much well balanced and well deserved as much as some people don't want to play it, and that's fine. I understand if you're not a PvP person, but I thought I was pretty impressed with how Conclave was handled and how you do your modding and your weapon designs. I like how it feels very balanced and not ridiculously over to the top and sometimes unbalanced like it is in Destiny, um, in the first one at least. I haven't played the second one, obviously. But the updates, the things they've changed, the things they fix, the things they address, has just made this game so amazing. And I'm, you know, thanks to Digital Extreme, Extremes for making such a wonderful game. And I hope to, I hope they're able to continue on longer than that. I would love to see this game last longer than I ever thought. And I'm happy that they're able to find ways to give things to the community, to give back to the community for for how much they've done to them. That you know the you know the people who buy the platinum, like myself, that helps them get money to to fund the game even better and fund the company even better. And they give us good updates and good situations and great design works and great reworks of certain mechanics like with you know parkour 2.0, the new spy vaults. Uh, couple of years like two years ago adding new game types over time giving us these events that are so massive and amazing when they added the raids of eight player modes that was just a mind blown that we ever i never thought i would actually see the sortie systems the quests the alerts there's so much to do than ever before and i'm just so happy to have how much it's grown and i'm happy to see more players are starting to take a like into this both on pc and the consoles and even though even though I that the console people on PS4 and Xbox One are, are not going to see the Plains of Eidolon for a while, unless they did update it instantly, which um, which this would be not obsolete of what I'm saying. But to my knowledge, they don't have it yet. But I cannot wait to see the console, the people who play on console, to get their hands on Plains of Eidolon and wonder how many people will grow on those consoles themselves when that comes around. 
but I I was hoping that I was thinking I was going to make a long video but I guess this is all I can say I think I said my words enough all I can say is thank you digital extremes thank you to all of you guys for the experience I've had for the past three years and hopefully to go on longer as long as I can you guys keep up always the great work I'm proud to be part of the Warframe family I'm proud to be part of this community and I'm proud to be a fan massively of this game everyone else have a wonderful day and take care and thank you for listening to this sort of thank you letter and my passion for such a game called Warframe and hopefully anyone who hasn't played it yet watching this video you hope you give it a try if it interests you it's definitely not an easy game to explain because just calling it a third person shooter doesn't help what the game entails because it's not Gears of War but either way thank you so much as always have a wonderful day and take care